Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Owl. I'm Yun and Young. I'm Chibi Noob. I'm Envy Jitters. And I'm Jira Cosmo. And we're back with our last week of Steven Spielberg Presents Month. We watched Animaniacs a few weeks ago, and you know what? Why not finish out the month on a strong, fun note with their movie, Wacko's Wish? So, yep. yeah. Who's seen this before? Uh, me? Yeah. I think I did in very early childhood. Mm. Yeah, same. <laughs> I believe this was 98, so it would be pretty early if you saw 99. it. 99. 99? Okay. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking I was probably like three or four years old. Yeah. Yeah, December 21st, 1999. So, so that's, it's practically a Christmas movie. Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it definitely felt like a Christmas movie when I was a child, but that wasn't the contributing factor. Not just the fact that it's like winter. <laughs> Okay, what's the contributing factor then? Because you were mentioning this before we went on, that, that you felt this was Christmas movie. Well, so I grew up Catholic. Mm-hmm. And I think the main reason that I like thought it was a Christmas movie was that it was about these three individuals following the light of a star. And there was this evil king that was trying to like beat them to whatever the star was leading them to. <laughs> so it's I was amazing. like, oh, it's like Jesus. <laughs> Yes, or you Listen, could Listen, the consider. Catholicism was there in my brain, and I was like five, okay? I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you. The real question at this point is, like, a quarter of a century later, did DreamWorks just pull this out of their backlog to just make Puss in Boots the last wish? I think they <laughs> put enough of a spin on it that I feel it's different enough. I like both. For it to so, something. So I'm fine. I mean, I mean, more importantly, how the hell did Warner Brothers and Disney work on this film behind the scenes? Like, yeah. I, I, I like to know that. Okay. Yeah, we were talking about the okay. weird credits and stuff. What was okay. going on? Okay, they yeah, didn't. They played the Pocahontas No. Song? What was li- that about? Everybody stop. They didn't. I got this <laughs> off of Internet Archive. Whoever edited the video and put it up, their, their name, they like Disney or whatever. Like Disney you notice, yeah, whatever. He uh, did that. It, it, it does not include Pocahontas. Disney had nothing to do with Why this. did he do that? Because he was weird. weird. I don't know. I think he's from Hungary or something. Does that gotcha. explain it? No, it doesn't explain anything. No, it, it's not Disney. Oh, disney Gary. I get it. Okay, is that like another <laughs> language kind of thing? Disney, Hungary, and then the G-A-R-Y at the okay. end. Oh. Well, thank you. So it's Dis- not Disney Gary. Thanks, Disney Gary. Disney Gary. <laughs> I'm going to call him Disney Gary. I don't give a shit. Uh, yeah, they, they uploaded the thing, so we found it for free because, you know, it's not always easy to find some of the older VHS-released stuff online. So, yeah, there is no Disney connection here. So we'll drop that right gotcha. now. I apologize. What song actually went under the credits. Uh, I think it was the uh, the instrumentals for the Wishing Star song because that was the final thing that they credited in the uh, credit section. Was the oh what was it? It was something Rhapsody. I think Hungarian Rhapsody is the name of the song. Convenient. Yeah. Yeah. So oh god, that does connect, doesn't it? Weird. <laughs> I wonder why he chose to get rid of that song. I don't know. Not the point. Not the point. Our our bizarre viewing experiences <laughs> aside. So this movie was the essentially the series finale for Animaniacs and includes pretty much the entire cast and, and extended supporting cast of the show doing various things in this like like medieval European fantasy story kind of kind of Brothers Grimm kind of mm-hmm. setting. We we get a little something from everybody, which was nice. And you know what? Everybody just go around. What was what was your initial thoughts? I thought it was really like fun and nostalgic to watch because I do have some memories or some inkling of memories of this. And I liked the little songs. It was pretty engaging throughout. It was Puss in Boots too, a lot of the <laughs> way through. And we were kind of laughing about that. Um, I thought the ending was a little like... When we found out the joke about what her operation was, that was like my least favorite part. What was that? I don't know. Bugged me. But otherwise, very fun little movie that, you know, it it felt very nostalgic and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I I say uh, this was definitely like a blast from the past. Now coming back as an adult and watching it again, sort of like... 
Al, you were explaining that this whole like movie was sort of about the Time Warner merger when or what did they get bought out or yep. something like that? Yeah. And sort of like TikTokia buying Warner stock. Yeah, they bought stock in Warner and yeah, took over. <laughs> yep. Um, and how they were making a lot of jokes with that. Now, as an adult, being able to see that. And yeah, it was just kind of fun. I agree with Yin that the uh, the cutie mark thing, uh, the operation, uh, was very dumb and kind of had me twitching my eye a little bit because I'm like, oh no. This is like nowadays, like, cosmetic surgeries. But this was like over like 20 years ago. <laughs> it's just like, was she never sick? <laughs> No, that's the joke. So. I thought that was dumb. I don't know. I mean, that's always been kind of their thing of like, hey, let's take this thing. But like, it, 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 you have to under, like this style of humor was always undercut any serious thing. But I feel like it was like, the movie was too long for that. It needed to be like a 15 minute skit then. I don't know. It just disappointed me. But anyway, yeah, like go maybe ahead. like a 45 minute special, maybe something like that. I don't know. Mm. I don't think they would have fit everybody in in that scenario, though. Yeah, but I don't know. I felt like the ending also went a little long. But honestly, I felt like I was watching that movie for like two hours and it was only an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm like, huh? I mean, I guess it's like sort of different when it's like it's a really good like fast paced movie and like everything is happening next, next, next. But then it's like, oh, it's still going. And then the movie ends and you're like, oh. It was so short, but it felt like less time, you know, because you were having fun. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> all that to say, uh, uh, I would say this was fun and nostalgic, but is, you know, is very silly. Well, like uh, the rest of this month, I haven't seen this before, so this is my first time watching it as a 29-year-old, and... Uh, it was cute. I had fun with watching it. There, I did get a lot of chuckles in the movie. I did like a lot of the uh, comedy. I did uh, surprisingly, I liked the uh, songs. I thought they were nice and catchy. Uh, it, overall, it was a you know a fun movie. And you know, if well, obviously we didn't know about the reboot till you know almost twenty years later after this aired, but it, it seemed like it was a decent series finale to end on. And going back to you know TikTok, yeah, I mean obviously the evil king has a bunch of clocks and his motif is clocks but me being five brain was like oh tiktokia so it's a perfect representation of tiktok taking over traditional cartoons and media for the youth of today beautiful honestly sure I, I forgot about that <laughs> and that's where my brain went that but was my immediate thought. And I was thought like, wait a minute, this was it. made in 1999. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> no, that was my immediate thought watching it. I was like, wow, TikTok took over uh, animation. Wonderful. And they say the Simpsons <laughs> were, were the ones to predict the future. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have too much to add. Yeah, it was cute. It was, I think it's serviceable as a Christmas special. Yeah. Thank you. Why not? Very true. It takes place in winter. The themes of like hope and magic and wishing. That's all and family. family. Yeah. Especially family. I just lost everything I was about to say. No. Mm, you sound like wacko. <laughs> yeah, this this I I can't remember like how many times I've seen this when I was a kid. I know I it's it's one of those things of like, oh yeah, this was just always a thing. Like so it's hard for me to be like, well, this was definitely when I watched it, but I've definitely seen this a number of times. I mean, I, I told you guys about the Time Warner thing and all that, uh, but I didn't know about that as a kid, but it was like, yeah, gets funnier as I as I learn more about it. And as I, honestly, weirdly enough, uh, part of the reason they did that was because the Warner Brothers Animation Department was one of the worst hit when that merger went through. And we've actually seen a bit of a repeat with that, with Discovery now taking over Warner Brothers. Uh, they didn't so much back then do the whole tax cut thing, but what they did do was torpedo a whole bunch of animation stuff, because that's always the first thing they go after. So this was, this was in a big way them being like, yeah, as soon as the takeover happened, they took all of our money away. <laughs> and yeah. Forever like, be bitter about Coyote versus Acme. Yeah, no. Well, there's actually two others that this uh, merger affected as well. 
because yeah. uh, there were there were a couple there were a couple movies from decent filmmakers who had it been kind of like thrown around the studios a little bit and they had been working on them uh, and they were they were kind of like these like sort of out there concept movies that during the merger all the like heads of the offices were like no one's going to go see these so what should we do about it well we can save a lot of money by just not putting these two movies in that many theaters and not advertising them at all because no one will see them anyway and then when no one saw it they were like well see we told you no one would see it no, it's because you didn't advertise these two movies. These two movies being uh, Cats Don't Dance and The Iron Giant. Yeah. Which are good. fucking amazing movies. I so, never yeah, saw I Cats say. Don't Dance, but The Iron Giant's a cult classic nowadays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Generally speaking, when Warner Brothers goes through a goddamn merger again, animation gets hit first. And, well, it doesn't help that yeah. the current uh, CEO of Warner Discovery hates animation. He just yeah, they all do. Uh, it, None of them get it. I don't think I don't think they've ever had a CEO that really gets animation. But yeah, so you know, history repeats itself. Who knows? May, hey, I, maybe as a result of this, it, it sucks. But maybe as a result of this, we'll get a, another Wacko's Wish or something like that. Maybe <laughs> I would prefer um, I, having just everything available, but whatever. I think the. Th- the thing with that is mostly it's just, I think the CEOs at this point are just people who, past the age of five, never watched cartoons. Yeah, and it's sass. Yeah. The thing is, is like, I find cartoons are so fun. And the thing is, is like, they make plenty of cartoons for like older audiences, including adults. Yeah. Ones that aren't like family guy yeah so i don't really understand what the stigma is about it but that's just me i think it's a cool yeah they thought they thing. thought a looney tunes movie would make fun come on yeah i think it's just a cultural thing that i think is starting to go out a little bit because of recent generations being a lot more open to just general ideas uh and mm-hmm. new stuff but yeah true they so how did we feel about like how they used everybody in that i think the only person who didn't get a bit but was like there in the background was minerva mink who i don't think we watched that much of at all in Mm. our watch through of some of those episodes Uh, the white creature with the blonde hair yes her she had like a very it, it it was a bit that didn't go very far she was kind of okay. uh, she was kind of just sexy, and that was the a sexy ferret. She's a mink, but yes, it's in the name. <laughs> but. No, the thing is, is like I never knew what her character was supposed to be, so I always just thought of her as the sexy ferret. Yeah, <laughs> as a uh, child. I think the only one that I, I remember was like there was supposed to be like some dog that was like supposed to hunt her, but she was like pretty, so he couldn't do it. And that was the joke. Mm. You're not going to get a ton of mileage out of that. It's kind of like chicken boo a little bit. A little bit. Obviously, you know, the main three were the Warner siblings. But I yeah. thought, you know, the other the other side characters, they kind of gave... Y- y- they each got a reason for why they wanted to get the star. And by the end of the movie, it's typical. But they each get their wish granted in a... Uh, cosmic sort of way so that was interesting yeah uh i like the little microcosm of what is it called circular flow uh of income it's like an economic theory right at the end where it's like hey give someone a little money and if they start spending it and everybody else starts spending that money over and over again hey it it helps the economy kind of thing yeah i actually looked up what a hey penny was and apparently it was an old british coin from like the 70s that was worth like one two hundredth of a pound so it wasn't even worth that much at all. But yeah, it's in like, this movie, it's like you it's like you got a thousand million bucks or something like that. Yeah, it's like a half a cent, but like everyone's so poor, that's a lot. <laughs> Everything's relative. I know about it from my Christmas song. It's like, if you haven't got a penny, a hate penny will do. I'm glad we got to see Pip, who was the guy I told you about during the Animaniacs episode where he he's just like never stops talking and everyone's so bored of him that was which nice. one was that again uh he was the fairy or the uh sorry not not a he was not a fairy oh ben stein ben yeah. Stein. Yeah. <laughs> he's his desire okay. fulfillment facilitator but you can call me pip you should have just said ben stein i would have got that <laughs> <laughs> well i want to i want to give him a title king salad bar not that interesting of a 
villain, quite frankly. A <laughs> little bit on the boring side. Nice little Basil Rathbone impression, but other than that. Yeah, he did his job. He was the dastardly villain. I guess he did murder two people. Yeah, he <laughs> murdered their parents. I'm trying to think here. Who do you feel had the most fun segment other than the Warners? I do like that Hello Nurse actually got a bit for once outside of just yeah. being an yeah. object of desire. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. 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 I mean, maybe it's maybe it's my bias, but I thought my favorite, you know, side segment was Pinky and the Brain. Them trying to use Da Vinci's flying machine, then yeah. the romance between Pink, Pinky, uh, Pinky and so I, I I forget the name of the horse. Farfik Tuker. <laughs> Farfik Newton. Farfik Newton. Yeah. Far <laughs> was Pinky calling her Father Newton? Farfik Tugan. or but Farfik Pinky. Newton? I don't know. I think. Pinky was mispronouncing it. Well, I wouldn't it's maybe like, is this, is this <laughs> gay Father Newton? I think Father Tugan is a girl, I think. Yeah, it, it is. is a girl. Yeah, It, it wasn't until is later that uh, Scratch and Sniff was talking to her. I was like, oh. Yeah, Pinky had some good stuff in this one. Uh, I think we talked about, like, during the Pinky and the Brain one, he, like, they really write a good dumb guy and how it's, like, the perfect joke to go along with whatever your misunderstanding kind of thing. And you gotta, like, you gotta, like, all of them are good. The hardest I laughed in the special was the whole segment where Brain tells Pinky to stop. It's like, okay, <laughs> and he just stops. <laughs> that got me to laugh hard. <laughs> so we also had good pigeons, or good feathers. Mm -hmm. I had a short bit. Buttons and Mindy. Buttons finally got, I love you puppy, good, good puppy, good dog, steaks. For once, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah, oh. and Mindy finally called Lady Mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, her mom's Snow White, apparently. Yeah. In this version, at and least. And the yeah. seven dwarves are her uncles. <laughs> yeah, I think they were just like pulling from whatever they could. Yeah. I get that. Envy, how'd you feel about your one of your favorite segments from the show episodes we watched coming back with the uh, the, the toilet? What was that? Which when was that again? When they went to the tunnel of torture. And oh. those were each bits from their, like, episodes. The uh, getting stuck with Jerry Lewis. The the bathroom that I haven't yeah. cleaned in three years. <laughs> and then yeah. getting stuck with Baloney the Dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't watch the Baloney or the Jerry Lewis one, unfortunately. I had no uh, point of reference for those. Just like, is this making fun of Barney? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Barney. Sure, educational television. Terrifying. Yeah. I'm trying to think here. It's tough because there's not a lot to say about this. It's it's really just fun. What would you guys uh, think your favorite song might have been, though? The one about the Hey Penny. Ah. Wishing Star. Yeah, I think the Hey Penny one might be my... Or the Hey Penny one or the last song of the movie. I'm a fan of the Wishing Star whenever everybody speeds up, and I'm just very impressed with how everyone's singing along to it. Yeah, I'd probably go Wishing Star, too. Yeah. They keep bringing up the Lakers. I guess that's a big thing for them. Well, it rhymed. <laughs> it was the late 90s, and I think the Lakers were like in the middle of like a three-peat or something like that, or they were starting off their mini dynasty back then. Hey, good for them. We got a return from the Wheel oh, of Morality. Oh, 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 there was, uh, there was uh, Slappy and her nephew, and then the, the, the cat, the dog. Yeah. I forget their names. Uh, yeah. Rita and Run with Bernadette Peters. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about her. Yeah. Always fun seeing Bernadette, or hearing Bernadette Peters. Yeah, and, and and by the end of the movie, when they made that quote-unquote elixir, what soft drink or, or sugary drink do you think they made? Coke. You thought it was, you know, oh, oh, that's right, it was. Yeah, it's Coke. Okay. Scratchy cold. <laughs> oh, another reason why it reminds me of a Christmas movie. Because <laughs> of Coca-Cola? The polar bears. Polar bears, Santa yeah. Claus. There Coke is a Christmas drink. Bro, there were no polar bears or, or Santa Claus in this movie. It was just Coke. Was Coke. You just associate a soft drink with a whole holiday, man. They got to you. <laughs> yes. They got to you, man. Listen, yes. advertising does a lot to your very well, small brain. Well, 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 to be fair, to be fair, one of the most earworming commercials in the last quarter century is one of Sprite Cranberry. <laughs> <laughs> Is yeah, it, that was Halloween. Is and Hocus it or, Christmas. Or is that just us because it's weird and we played that game? Why do you think that game existed? Because of the I meme. know why that game existed, but I'm not going to put that down as like, 
you become a cultural icon. Sprite no, no. Cranberry. But, but Sprite is also owned by Coke. Yeah, I know, because they own everything. <laughs> Plus, uh, Coke is why Santa is usually depicted in red. They popularize that. Mm, that is true. Cool. That was from a Coca-Cola ad back in like the early 1900s. Mm. Yeah, everything. Or was it the creepy. 1800s? It was sometime around there. Coke's been around forever. We had a copy of uh, "It Was the Night Before Christmas" that was like made by Coke. God, they they, they were in everything. Yeah. Yep. And to be fair, I know this because I have cousins that live in the South. Apparently, in certain parts of the South, you just say Coke if you want soda or pop. You don't even. It, it, you don't even yeah. need to have Coke. You could just say, I want a Coke. Okay, so what do you want? Uh, give me that yeah. one. Yeah, like, can I get a Coke? What kind? Pepsi. Nah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a thing in Texas. No, I just wouldn't drink Pepsi. I grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> How do we feel about the mime? I mean... It, Poor mime. You don't hate the mime like everyone else seems to? He's just doing his job. <laughs> yeah. I expect to just see a mime. I don't think I've ever seen a real mime. In real life. Consider yourself lucky. Hmm. You know what? I don't feel like we have a very vocal mime audience, so I feel fine in insulting them. (laughs) That's mean. (laughs) Rude. I mean, it's kind of like performance art, and, you know, I mean, you know, it's probably been around hundreds of years, so, I mean, that's what it is. How long have mimes been a thing? Let's not. (laughs) More importantly, they're still a thing. Yeah. Uh, Apparently, oh. uh, SeaWorld has one. Great. Oh, the per- the performance of mime originates as early as the ancient Greeks. Wow. I buy it. <laughs> From the single masked dancer called Pantomimus. Uh, oh. Although yeah, performances were not necessarily silent. Okay. It feels <laughs> like it feels like we've run into uh, the end of every <laughs> thought that we've had. If this is where we're going. <sighs> Tune in to our Patreon feed this weekend for History of Mimes. Yes, this... And Coca-Cola. This episode <laughs> brought to you by the mime. Sorry! <laughs> Anywho, I mean, what, do we have anything else to say here? It's like, it's tough. There's nothing to criticize here, I don't think. Because, yeah. like, even, like, for a, like, straight-to-video movie, animation's still good. I mean, a little bit low-quality because I had to find it from a specific place. But, like... I thought that was good. A lot of the animation was good. The songs are great. The characters are holdovers from the show, which was amazing. And they are they all work still. I don't know. I'll wrap this into my final thoughts. It's a yay. Go watch it. It's a perfect Christmas movie and tells you all about the problems with, it, with corporate merger, mergers. So a perfect Christmas movie. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, I would say it's a yay as well. It's a fun little, you know, Christmassy, wintry movie with lots of little songs. And like I said before, it was nostalgic for me. Um, Good time all around. I'd say it's a a yay. I I at least now feel vindicated in saying that it, it, or thinking that it was a Christmas movie as a child. (laughs) So, but yeah, this was fun. I had a good time. Enjoyed the songs. So it's a yay. (laughs) Uh, yeah, it's a yay. I had fun watching the movie, so I can't really say anything else. Yeah, it's great. It's cute. If you like the Animaniacs, you will like this. A good winter movie. Um, oh, something I didn't say before is at the end when Wacko has the two hay pennies, and he's going around spending it, and it kind of like passes through the entire town. I'm like, oh yes, this is why we should raise the minimum wage. Because when people have money, they spend money. Yes. It's like, no, if you increase the minimum wage, then a burger will cost, cost like $25. No, it won't. No, it Because won't. people will be spending money. Yeah. So. Anyway, that's the circular flow of <laughs> economics. <laughs> also, if you want to watch something that's also like a parody of corporate mergers, Twisted by Starkid yep. is very yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah, that had, to, so good. had to do with the problem with like dropping the two Ds from Disney. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like them buying out Pixar, <laughs> and it's a parody of Aladdin and Wicked, and it's just very funny. Okay, I I was wondering if that was the same thing that you were referring to. Yeah, yeah. and if you want another yeah. a, a movie that's just as much of a Christmas movie as this thing is, go watch Die Hard, which also has some interesting yeah. things about corporate America. Really, if you look at what the laws were at the time and seeing how much uh, negotiable bear bonds Takagi had in that vault, uh, he was up to some shit. I'm just saying. Hans Gruber might not actually be the villain. Tax 
tax the rich. <laughs> yeah, that's essentially what we're getting to here. Well, yeah, tax the rich and don't overtax the animators who actually make quality movies like this. And don't eat the rich. Don't throw them away as a tax cut. Don't bomb their movies because you didn't advertise them at all, even though they were amazing films. You know, I think we're going. Us, we're going off. Give a us the bit. movies. Tax the rich. Yeah, die hard. <laughs> <laughs> Die hard. I feel like we've lost the plot, which feels about right for this yeah. for this month. This month is yeah. over, unfortunately. I'm sad, but also, hey, I've gotten to relive uh, the better part of my childhood with some of these shows and this movie, so I'm happy. So let's so let's talk next week. Next week, it's Spooky Month, which is another great month. Just just generally. Love me some October, and we're going to have uh, something for Spooky Month. I'm not really going with a particular theme, just some stuff that uh, we've been kind of looking forward to, to seeing here and there. Uh, we're going to be watching Gargoyles, which was such a weird thing for Disney to make in the 90s, but we're so glad they did it. Uh, there's it's a so good. Vampire Hunter D. We're watching that for a specific reason. I will explain that week why, but for now, it's just, yeah. Uh, Spawn, because spooky shit and what's more spooky than than uh an american tv show about paranormal hauntings and monsters that's turned into an anime <laughs> let's watch supernatural the animation hell yeah <laughs> anyway that's that those are the ones we got coming up for spooky month and come check out other things we're gonna be playing spooky games and other things like that so hope you enjoy that come come back listen to us talk about economics, I guess, or <laughs> corporate mergers or, or whatever else you feel like. I don't know. Is this, is this helping? Is this helping? Are you enjoying this? I'm really asking you right now. Are you enjoying this? Press the like button if you are. Yeah. Or subscribe. Yeah, Actually, and subscribe. There's lots that of things help. you could do, man. There's lots of things you could do. We're rambling. Most importantly, don't forget to vote. Yeah, vote. That too. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be a year. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoy this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!